Ah, jammies. I love wearing them. Always have. But I noticed there aren't very many songs about jammies. So I set out to write one. The Ultimate Jammies Anthem. A song parents around the world could play during jammy time to wear out their children before bed. But I couldn't do this alone. I needed a partner. Luckily, I know the world record holder for wearing pajamas the longest. His name is Muck Sticky. I'm Muck Sticky. Muck Sticky. Muck Sticky. Legendary Muck Sticky. Now, Muck Sticky is a well-known Memphis musician, among other things. He holds a world record. He's been wearing PJs every day since July 2nd in 2002. So put on or keep on your PJs in his honor. You're Muck Sticky. I like your pajamas, man. Thanks, Ryan. Hey, how long have you been wearing pajamas again? Oh, I guess it's about 6,775 days or so. That's some kind of record? Man, it's a world record. I'm the pajama man. Well, let's have a pajama jam. Yeah! Time to put on your favorite jammies with all your family homies. It's time to go to sleepy, so might as well be cozy. Time to listen to your mommy. She don't want no more sassy. A jammy here, a jammy there. Those jammies sure look classy. Now jam in your jammies. Jam in your jammies.
Anyway, thanks for having us and thanks to the cast and crew of Gorner. What a fucking great show. What a bunch of oh, fucking, fucking great people. Thank you. Good evening, and you're here with us on Talking Tall, the two-hour Jethro Tall discussion group. Uh, my name is Chaz Watson, and we'll be talking about Jethro Tall in 78 for the next two hours. I'm just kidding. This is Goner TV, and I hope that'll be at least mildly more interesting than talking about Jethro Tall for the next two hours. we got a lot of great stuff coming up for you. In the next in the show, uh, what do we got going on? We got Heather Vince in the studio. She's going to talk about screen printing and various aspects of screen printing. Uh, I don't know. I, I've seen. I know you have the thing, and that's that's the, the end of my technical knowledge of screen printing. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to try um, uh, the second act of our game show. Um, what the hell was it called again? Uh, did. That's right. That was what I wanted. I wanted somebody to answer me. Did they really? The show where I make uh, statements and you tell whether I'm full of shit or not. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, Lucy from Big Clown is coming in to talk about her record uh, uh, collection and various other dealings. And uh, because this is a professional show, she's sitting in a green room far away from here and not in a chair nearby off camera. And... Uh, because this is a professional studio situation that we're in. Uh, what else we got? We got some good mail this week. Uh, we um, Some of you watch regular watchers of this show <clears throat> may remember me from segments like Bill Up Sees a Movie. Sometimes the Bill Up Sees a Movie players get dressed up and recreate scenes in movies. We got a wolf mask from uh, the Wolf of Snow Hollow. I'm pretty proud of that. We also got... A shooting scene from Scarface. I'm happy to have that. I'm going to frame that and put it in my art room at home. And can they see this? They've got the tech. Can you see that on the screen? They've got the tower. Just barely. Scoot back. Well, I'll, I'll, pull it. I'll pull it up. How about that? We've got the lighthouse from the lighthouse. <laughs> and I'm hoping to make that a regular feature back here. And it's made out of a, a box of beer. So <laughs> those people, you know, we're all on the same page here in terms of quality and, uh, you know, useful things, making use of things that might not be useful anymore. Once the beer box is empty, do something with it. Uh, that's my message. Uh, what else we got? Man, just lots of videos. You know how it goes. That's what we got going on. Um, so why don't we get into the next one? And that is Bancroft Rex Music Vid Zurich Cloud Monitors. None of these I recognize as words. In English, <laughs> but maybe that's why it's, it's going to be fun, though, because we're going to learn something now. All right, let's get into it. Uh, we're watching Goner Television right now, and I'll be watching it with you, so stay tuned, and we'll be back in a little while.
Does it matter? Okay. Um, as you can tell, we haven't worked out some of the details of this game show. But we're going to give it a shot here. We got two guests with us on Goner TV tonight. Right. We got Donna Asu, a native Californian. Say hello, Donna. Hi. How are you? Good. How's California out there? It's cold, surprisingly. Cold. Just a couple of days, it was super warm, and now it's Arctic. But you're still there, hanging on to the absolutely. side of the country and everything. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The land, everything. And he says here you like Korean barbecue and cats. Those are yeah. your hobbies. <laughs> absolutely. You know, I knew I knew somebody who told me they did not like rice at all. Not only that they didn't like it, but they were disgusted by it. Can you imagine something like that? No. I cannot. <laughs> it's a fairly innocuous food, isn't it? Why would you find Grice disgusting? All right. And let's say hi to Daniel Bauer. <laughs> for, for those of you that don't know, like, I'm hearing myself a little bit after I talk, so we're just going to keep going with that. But it, it is odd. Daniel, say hi to everybody. Hey, everybody. How are you? Daniel's also on the West Coast ish. That's Washington, Bellingham, Washington. You close yeah. to any water out there? Yeah, there's a bay, and I'm not too far from not too far from the ocean. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty close. Now uh, tell them tell tell our audience the difference between a bay and an ocean. <sighs> um, I think a bay is connected to an ocean, but significantly smaller and mostly surrounded by people. Well, that sounds terrific. Okay, uh, let's play the game. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys and your uh, patience and time with this. So you haven't seen the game yet. I'm going to tell you what happens. I'm going to make a statement of fact, at least in my mind. But uh, it may not be a true statement of fact, and you have to tell me whether this tr piece of trivia is true or false. Do you think you can do that? Yes, sir. You guys ready to play Hi. the game? So I'm going to say something, and I'm going to say, did they really? And you tell me whether you think the trivia is true. You got that? Is that pretty evident? All right, good. All right. Um, we took a fake coin toss earlier, and Donna won it. So Donna's going to go first. Cool. Donna, Jackie Robinson was the first baseball player to appear on a postage stamp. Donna, did they really? Yeah. Are you a sports fan? Uh, I do like baseball, but do you? details are bad. I'm bad with mm. details. But yeah, sure. Let's do it. They did. <laughs> All right. Donna, you are on the board. That is true. Jackie Robinson was the first baseball player yeah. yes. to appear on a postage stamp. That was 1982 that that happened. All right, Daniel, are you ready to answer? Yeah. I am. Big Eddie Murphy fan? Yeah, kind of. All right. Well, let's see how you do. The Eddie Murphy vehicle, Beverly Hills Cop, was originally written for Sylvester Stallone. Daniel, did they really? <laughs> I don't see how that movie would work with Sylvester Stallone in it, so I'm going to say no. Daniel, I'm sorry. I, evidently, it was true. Is that movie was written <laughs> as a Sylvester Stallone vehicle. Eddie Murphy did, in fact, do much better with it. We all agree with that. Yeah, but yeah. Um, Sorry, Daniel. You'll have a chance to answer in a moment. Uh, Donna, uh, Jimmy Carter's brother, Billy Carter, once testified before Congress that he was not a, quote, buffoon, boob, or wacko. Donna, did they really? Yeah. So, Donna, you're really killing the board. That actually happened. <laughs> Billy Carter had to tell Congress in person that he was not a buffoon, a boob, or a wacko. All right, Daniel, we're back in the movies. Let's get let's get you back on the board with a movie question. George Lucas and Steven Spielberg decided to collaborate on Raiders of the Lost Ark while parasailing. <sighs> Um, uh, sure. Yeah. 
Daniel, I'm sorry. They were not parasailing. They decided to make this. Really sorry, man. Uh, but funny enough, according to what my sources, they were building a sandcastle of all things. A weird fact that I altered to trick you. Sorry about that, man. All right, Donna, your yeah. chance to get into the movie trivia. Are you ready for your big movie fan? I am. My big reveal, yeah. I'm All ready. right. 1983's Gorky Park, starring William Hurt, was the first Hollywood production to film in Red Square. Donna, did they really? Yes. Eh, Donna, that's your first miss. I'm sorry. The first film to film in Red Square was 1988's Red Heat with the soon-to-be governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So Daniel is still in the game. All right, All right Daniel. You ready? Uh, I got to be, man. I got to redeem you myself You got to get here. on the board. Well, <laughs> yeah. hopefully you will win this point with your knowledge of Weird Al Yankovic. Oh, well, when I was a kid, yeah. Weird Al Yankovic hastily renamed his 1988 album even worse after being denied permission to use the Run DMCA parody Tougher Than Lather. Daniel, did they really? I would, I'm going to guess no. Ding, Daniel is on the board. I have no evidence that suggests that uh, Weird Al Yankovic was going to name his album Tougher Than Lather. All right. So that's 3-3. Three, three. So it's time for the face-off. You ready for a cool. face-off? Mm-hmm. And we're going to play the face-off theme right now, I think. <laughs> Daniel and Donya, Donna, Donna, Donya, Daniel, Donya. I'm, I'm just gonna put, put your both your names together. I hope you guys are having fun. I appreciate your patience up to this point. Face off is a bit different. I'm gonna give you both the same question. I'm gonna give you three answers. Two of them are correct. One of them is not. So, I don't know. You got a paper or something you can keep up with this on or? No, you don't. Well, I'll, well, let me. I'm going to write your names down again here. This is, you know, unprofessional television here. Um. Okay, let's just do Don. Let's 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 ask Donna first. Okay, which of these, out of these three Star Trek aliens, one is not really a Star Trek alien? Okay. You ready for that? So you understand? I'm sorry, I'm mealy mouthed. <laughs> no, three, three things are going to be read to you. Two of them are true. Okay. You, you ready for that? Yes. Star Trek fan at all? No. 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 That's, Sorry. Let's do all it. Right. Come on. Okay. Bring it up. <laughs> all right. The Borgs. The Gorns. The Torgs. <laughs> this one's going to be a bit of a guess, I'm sure, for everyone. <laughs> Let me read those to you one more time. Yeah, please. The Borgs with a B, mm -hmm. the Gorns with a G, mm -hmm. or the Torgs. <laughs> and I'll give you a hint. If either of you are esoteric about city planning, you might have a hint in this one. <laughs> um, I am going to go with the Torgs. So the Torgs is a correct yes. answer? Okay. Final answer. Now, wait, how does that work? Hold on. I got to figure this out. <laughs> they have to guess two? No, she's saying that that's the false answer. Oh, that's the false answer. Okay, good. Yeah. Now, Daniel, what do you think? Well, the other two? Oh, man. Um, okay, I'll read them again. Yeah. The Borgs. <laughs> the Gorns. <laughs> Or the Torgs. You have outdone yourself with this question. Um, what was what's the one she picked? She thinks the, the Torgs? Torgs is not the correct answer. 
I'm going to go with the Gorns because Torg and Borg rhyme. That's a good way to guess Daniel, but I'm sorry. Totally it's not <laughs> correct. She really blew it. Daniel guessed correct, uh, correctly. A Torg is a city square. A Borg and a Gorn are both aliens in Star Trek. So, Donna, you are the clear winner tonight. What? Say Thank you. Way for Donna. Well done. Sorry about Thank that, you. Daniel. The questions just didn't go your way this time. But we're going to send you a Goner t-shirt and uh, a smaller Sorry. gift certificate than Daniel's going to win, whatever that is. Uh, and Daniel, no, Donna, you're going to get a gift yeah. certificate. I'm no, sorry Daniel, about that. Daniel, Donna. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. In my defense, they picked two close names. I mean, this is very, this is very, you know. And I'm not a professional, if you haven't figured that out. So, oh, you're a professional. And again, I can only hear myself a second after I say everything. So, I'm already thinking it about what I'm saying. It's like a Star Trek episode itself. But I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys did too. <laughs> You, you guys you. will get some some credit. We're going to take you off the video feed, and we're going to give you some information on how to, uh, you know, turn in your credit for your next shopping experience at Goner Records. Awesome. And thank you so much. I hope you had fun. I did. I did. Thank you. you can say you had fun if, if, if it, w it would help me out a little bit if you would just say. I had a blast. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Daniel and Donna, everybody. So let's have you give a hand. Good job, Donna.
Yeah. All right. Our our next segment here is uh, um, a little peek into the world of Quintron's uh, big organ moments. Uh, compiled a few things from his past few shows that weren't really um, glitchy on YouTube, like one of them was. But it's a uh, every Sunday he's been doing this stuff and uh, some really wild organ player. I I really don't know anything about organ playing or I didn't even think I really liked organ playing until I watched his show and it's amazing so let's watch this little bit and tune in Sundays with Quintron 1 p.m. I think hello everybody and uh, welcome to the premiere episode of big organ moments um, we have lots of fun things in store for you today on this lovely Sunday afternoon in New Orleans it's really nice out and um, yeah, so this is what I'm doing for the next five weeks or something. Yeah, I got in kind of a uh, rut of depression during COVID. And what dug me out of the hole was uh, listening to music and diving into my vast collection of organ records. Um, so I thought I would share some of them with you and some of the knowledge that I've gained about these incredible artists. Which help induce the more exalted state of mystical consciousness. I kind of agree with that guy about a lot of stuff. So all of her years playing for radio and for silent film prepared her for this record for sure. They just said, Rosa, you're on, go. This is what happened. Listen a little bit. Scoring these radio shows and scoring silent films, like those, those organists didn't see the film until that day half the time. So you had to think on your feet, you had to know your theory, and you had to be a good improviser. And who but a lady from New Orleans would know about that? So thank you, um, Organ Pipers, for the Bloody Mary. Often underestimated that people are really, it doesn't matter if they have a lot of knowledge about uh, what's happening there or they have no knowledge at all. They're like, or they are super dumb or not interested. Uh, but Everything that is created in between the artwork and them is the art itself. That's what I believe. So it's really the thing in between. And that's why yeah. people who perceive art should not only see themselves as someone who is just consuming. They should see themselves as someone who is co-creating it with his or her own memory and his, uh, her old uh, histories and um, ideas. Swings and ring a ding. But they they were very much in love and stayed together the whole time, and that was like they didn't she didn't change styles, she didn't add band members, she didn't make a dubstep track. It was like this is what we do. You play the drums, I play the organ, and we're doing we're gonna go wherever people want that. <laughs> make different tones. Um, when I think of Florida, I think of an organ player named Lenny D. Uh, Lenny D was born and raised in Chicago, born in Chicago in 1923. He released 56 albums, a massive amount of records. 
uh, and he was a real techie guy. He he liked to trick his organ out. He loved he loved the latest thing. You know, at the end of his life, he was playing these crazy digital things because he was all about moving up. Unlike Cherry Wayner, who took her Hammond B three trusty B three to Vegas and played it to the end of her life. Lenny was all about the next thing. And uh, in the early days, he was putting tape echo, building tape echo into his B to his uh, Model A. I think he played a Model A mostly. Uh, built a Solovox into it, which is some early Hammond synth stuff and uh, Vibracord. <laughs> Lenny D, like Cherry Wayner, loved his little poodles. Here's here's Lenny with Little Miss Muffet. If I if I'm incorrect, uh, please somebody who knows correct me. But I think that this this poodle was called Little Miss Muffet, and she went everywhere. This Bloody Mary is from Lenny D's Dolphin Den. great wasn't it the organ moments with quintron that was very interesting and he has a what he has a podcast where he does that so look that up uh under podcasts um and uh wasn't that fun doing the game show again i think that went a little smoother than the first time i had fun i hope our contestants did hope you had fun watching it tonight we got lucy with us lucy from big clown lucy is from jackson mississippi and is a zine enthusiast and creator, uh, say hello. Tell us about yourself. Hello, I'm a zine enthusiast and creator. Actually, I just got a zine tattoo. Do you want to see it? Yeah, let's see that. I have a long arm stapler now. Now, for those of the audience that don't know what a long arm <laughs> stapler is. <laughs> Wasn't expecting applause, but thank you. <laughs> Tell us the advantages of a long arm stapler. Well, as you can see on my arm, <laughs> it's long. And mm. so if you want to fold a booklet like most zines are, then it has the reach to get there. Whereas your average stapler just does not have the reach. Well, that's good. See, we're learning a lot tonight. Uh, so, talk about uh, talk about uh, some albums that you found around the store. Yes, that have influenced what? Talk about what your your life and your music influenced my life, my music, and my current listening habits. Maybe. Yeah, I wouldn't say this is an exhaustive list. I would say this is uh, uh, what right. I could find. We don't have enough film for an exhaustive list. Just <laughs> show us one of the damn records. One of the ones. That <laughs> okay, well, in that case, so this first one I picked is a Crisis record, which is would not yeah. u be my usual jam, but Crisis is just fucking really good. I saw them live a few years ago in Finland, and it was a great show. Are they, are they from Finland? No, they're UK, right? Mm. This is Crisis UK. Yeah. And they're a great, like, skinhead type band, but, like, seemingly not in the racist way, which is always <laughs> an adva a good thing. A um, lot of people uh, pushed me a lot at the show. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time. That's Crisis. Yeah. What's the album? Hymns of Faith. Buy it at Ghana Records. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the next one I had here, how did I put this here, was this Pryor's album, New Pleasure, which those of you that were at Goner Fest two years ago, I think, saw Pryor's play. Um, you I know saw where they're play. from? Montreal. They're from Montreal. Montreal. Yeah. That, and that's in Canada. I think so. International. Yeah. And it's an international episode. Um, a lot of flavor. <laughs> Pryor's are a great band, and they played a real hard, good set at Gonerfest. I hadn't listened to them before that, but it was great. So good, in fact, that I attempted to toss a beer can, but overshot it, and it landed on the like tent top of the stage, never to be retrieved. <laughs> so if you're in the band Priors, please know that I did enjoy your show, but just couldn't hit you with a beer can fast enough. And that beer can is still there today. Still there to this day. 
Um, some fried egg. Fried egg. If you don't own this album, you should. It's good. That's really all I have to say about this. Square One. It's a good ass well, album. Well, tell us what it sounds like. It sounds like um, rock and roll. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing: is I don't have a lot of the music words. So it's a hard boiled egg. <laughs> it's a hard boiled egg. egg. They're just a good hardcore band. Mm-hmm. They. It's just fucking a good time. Straightforward hardcore. Straightforward hardcore. From yeah. the, from any particular uh, region. Richmond, baby. Richmond Virginia. All That's right. what I was thinking. So glad I'm right. Love it when I'm right. Um, Moradieu, Moradieu, which is French, maybe, or maybe just the name is French, <laughs> or maybe none of it is French. They're from somewhere. The album is called Puissance. It's good. It sounds like good music, folks. I think I've heard that one before. A bit of a... I think they're Swiss living in Germany. Yes. Ah, oh, wow. We're really getting into it now. Yeah. With a French name. German expatriates living Amazing. in Switzerland. This is fantastic. Yeah, it's a good ass album. And I saw there's a silver version over there, too, which if you're the type of person that enjoys things that are colorful or silver, then they have one. But it's not made of real silver. <laughs> I thought it was, but go off. Alpha Hopper, Buffalo, yeah. John Biff, if you're out there, hey, love you. Um, Alpha Hopper is a good ass band with some synthesizers, maybe sometimes from buffalo new york on everybody's favorite swimming faith um john two hill of science man and spit kink and a bunch of other good bands um is also an alpha hopper put this out last year and it is worth a listen it's a banger next up this one is really kind of random this is one of those situations of like i found it via Spotify, and but it turned out to be good. Um, Rima Rima, great band. Everything they do is good. Really good, like synth type band. Mostly instrumentals, not a lot of lyrics. Good, just good ass listening. It's a good time. Would recommend. And this album, which one is this? I just picked up the first one that said Rima Rima. Fond reflections. So fondly reflecting on why this album is great. <laughs> it's great. I'm fond of it. Oh, and this is the last one. Okay, this one is my favorite. All fucking hits from Melbourne, I think, from Australia. Good ass band. The album is called Men and Their Work. It is fast. It is loud. It is good. And they are ladies. If you are not interested in that, I am not interested in you. (laughs) It's a good ass record. Definitely worth a listen. On Iron Lung, which is a, just a great label in general. And they, the Iron Lung puts out a lot of hardcore as well, don't they? Would you say they mm-hmm. were a hardcore-ish band or hardcore speed band at that point? Or, yeah, hardcore yeah. speed at least. It's mm. just good stuff. Yeah. But also for the punk crowd. For the punk crowd. Mm. For sure. Yeah. If you make a distinction, you are smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> I just That's what I have on that. Um, and then my final release, not a record, but in fact a tape. And if I could get a zoom on this potentially, maybe I can't. We can't. There's no zoom on it. I'll <laughs> zoom it way. closer to you. <laughs> oh, d- <laughs> this is the literal. <laughs> Alec is going to most analog zoom manually right zoom. There. This is um, Video number magic. one angel by Charlie XCX. If you haven't listened to it, it's worth a listen. It began a very important era of pop music um, inspired by PC music. It also costs one hundred and eighty dollars. Now, now, why the high price tag on this? Well, one? I'll tell you, yeah, Bill. Tell me about it. Not because it is special in any way, except for the fact that Charlie XCX fans, unlike myself, are all um, between the ages of 12 and 14. <laughs> None of them own cassette decks or record players. And what they do is they, as soon as any physical Charlie XCX release comes out, they buy all of them and uh-huh. they put them on their bedroom shelves. Weird. And sometimes they hang the posters. Hmm. Um I respect the dedication to music, but these people do infuriate me. If you're 14 and you own this $180 cassette tape, I will find you. (laughs) I will find you because I want to buy it, but I can't. If you have $180 and want to make my life a lot better, buy me this dumb tape, please. (laughs) I truly hit me on Instagram. I will give you my address. 
that's all for me. That's it. Well, what's coming up? Uh, what's coming up for you soon? Are you guys gonna make some more music soon? Big Clown is writing right now. Mm. We're um, working on getting back together now that we're all vaxxed up mm. and um, ready to make music again. I've been writing lyrics for a year, so mm. I'm excited to see where that goes. Zines? Any new zines coming up? Oh, you, there's always new zines, yeah. baby. You know me. Any more zine tutorials for Goner Television? Ooh, no. I'm yes. Yeah. If you're asking, yes. I um, recently put out a zine. <laughs> <laughs> if you did not say, I'm just kidding. I would have cried. I. I'll just make it a joke. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, love you, buddy. Yeah. Um, I did a zine back in well, not recently, back in November now about the band King Kong, um, because I felt that nobody listens to King Kong and more people should. But it turns out if you make a zine about a band nobody listens to, also nobody buys your zine. Likes the zine. So if yeah, you would like a zine equation, about yeah. King Kong, uh, please get in effect, touch. I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, not a lot of interest on that one. But if you want one. Fuck it, I got them. And or at this if you point, want I'll send 50 them. of them. <laughs> she can send you that too. I will send them to you for free. I'm about to move and would like to not have to move them. So listen well, to King Kong. Bye it sounds zines. like you're putting some effort in during the COVID time anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. Getting out there. Yeah, That's yeah. That's good. That's good. Well, That's we the have only to way. Keep it up, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on the show with us. Thanks for having me, Yeah, Bill. we'll have you again, and I'm sure we'll have some more zine uh, stuff from you Absolutely. when you're ready to produce it. No question. What do we got coming up? We're getting towards the end of the show. Is this the end? This is it. Oh, well, we get to say goodnight. We got, oh, man, this is good. So we got some footage from Goner Fest 3 coming up, The Testers. One of my all-time favorite singles together. Uh, They'll be, you know, they're playing that at Goner Fest 3. Some old video. I guess it's time to say goodnight. Anybody have any other business? No? No before the hammer goes down? Okay. (laughs) We'll say this was a great show. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back in two weeks. Say good night, Lucy. Good night, Lucy. And uh, we'll see you then in two weeks. Enjoy the testers and the credits. And you've been watching Goner Television. Woo! All right, this is for the hardcore testers fans. It's called Together. Yeah!